Hi. Now, I've got an example here, the third in my series on inverse trig functions. You might like to try it. If you've watched the other videos, uh, you might have got some idea of how to tackle problems like this. We've got to show that arc sine x plus arc cos x equals pi upon 2. And uh, have a go if you want, just pause the video, have a go and uh, come back uh, when ready and I'll work through the work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go, let's see how you got on. Well, what I'd want to do is first of all break down each of these terms. I would say something like let y equal arc sine x as we've done so often in the previous videos. And if we take the sine of both sides, we would therefore have sine y equals x. And if I was to let another uh, angle equal arc cos x, let's say z, let z equal arc cos x, then if we take the cosine to both sides, we get cos of z equals x. Now, I would want to draw up the graphs, sketch the graphs of y equals arc sine x and y equals arc cos x. And if I did that, we'd have the graphs looking like this. Okay, We should be familiar with these graphs by now. So y equals arc cos x and y equals arc sin x. So what we're looking for is a value of x. And x can be positive between 0 and 1 or negative between 0 and minus 1. So let's just start first of all when say x is a positive value. Let's just take x here say. Now when x is positive you're going to find that you could get two values. This one here on y equals arc sine x and this one up here on y equals arc cos x. Let's suppose that this one on y equals arc sine x is y and this value is then the z value. So when x is greater than zero I'd now want to look at a quadrant diagram. So when x is greater than zero we'd have a quadrant diagram where both y and z are in the first quadrant. It's so that they are acute angles between naught and pi upon two radians. So if I was to draw a quadrant diagram something like this we've got our first quadrant, the second quadrant's over here, third, fourth, then if we put our triangle in here, our right angle triangle, this angle here would be y. Well that's if we look at angle y. We know that sine of y equals x or x over 1. So we can see that the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be x over 1 there. And by Pythagoras' theorem we can work out the third side as being the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus x squared. Remember this would be naught radians, this would be pi upon 2 radians. And in this quadrant, the first quadrant, all trig functions are positive. So we've got sine y then equals x. But what about cos z? Cos z also equals x. And cosine of an acute angle, because we know that z's got to be an acute angle, would compare in a right angle triangle the adjacent with the hypotenuse. Well I can see that if I make this angle z, then the adjacent side to z would be x and the hypotenuse would be 1. And as I say, because it's a cute angle, it would be a positive value. So everything seems consistent with this. So when x is greater than 0, we can see that if we were to add these three angles together, 
the y, the z, and I know I've got that as a right angle, that would be pi upon 2 radians, we know that the three angles must come to pi radians, equivalent to 180 degrees. So we could say that y plus z plus pi upon 2 must come to pi radians. And it follows from that statement that if I subtract pi upon 2 from both sides that y plus z must equal pi upon 2. And y plus z, y is arc sine x and z is arc cos x. So if you add those two together you get pi upon 2. So I've certainly proved that result when x is a positive value between 0 and 1. It's clearly going to be true when x equals 0 because when x equals 0 arc sine of 0 is going to give 0 and arc cos of 0 gives pi upon 2 so when you add 0 to pi upon 2 you clearly get pi upon 2. So I'm going to now say when x is greater than or equal to 0 it clearly works. All right. So let's have a look now at when x is a negative number between 0 and minus 1. Let's say that we put our value of x over here. Now if x is a negative number then there's going to be this value that you could have. Let's just call this y again. And there's going to be this value up here which we're going to call z again. Okay. So we'll look at when x is less than 0. So when x is less than 0, if we were to draw our quadrant diagram now, let's just put it in here, we've got this as being 0 radians. Now let's start to look at z first of all. Okay, It's going to be an obtuse angle. It's between pi upon 2 radians and pi radians. And that means it's going to be in the second quadrant. So if I draw a triangle in here, okay, that's our right angle there, pi upon 2 radians, I can mark in Z as our obtuse angle. It's round here, angle Z. And when we're looking at the cosine of Z, we know that in this quadrant only sine is positive, cosine is negative. And cosine of z, we're told, is x. x over 1, if you like. So adjacent over hypotenuse means that this side is x and this side, the hypotenuse, is 1. So if we work out this third side here by Pythagoras' theorem, it's going to be the square root then of 1 minus x squared. So we've got the cosine of z then equals x and we filled in the sides. Now let's have a look at y. Now y when x is negative is going to be an angle between naught and minus pi upon 2. So we know that if we turn this way this angle up here is pi upon 2 and this would be pi but when we turn in a clockwise sense this is regarded as minus pi upon 2 radians. So if y is to be an angle between 0 and minus pi upon 2, it's got to be an angle in the fourth quadrant here. So if I just draw another triangle in, okay, angle y is going to be this one in here. And we know that the sine of y equals x, x over 1 opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite would be x, this would be 1. And this third side here would be, by Pythagoras' theorem, square root of 1 minus x squared. So when I look at these two triangles, they've got the same sides, so therefore they must have the same angles. And we've got to be very careful here because it means that this angle that I've got here, let's just put a double angle in there. 
if you look carefully at this triangle it's between the 1 and the root of 1 minus x squared so this angle here is the same as the angle up here but you've got to be very careful because y here is a negative angle imagine if that was say minus this could work in degrees I find it a bit easier here if that was say minus 30 degrees then this angle up here wouldn't be minus 30 it would be just simply 30 degrees so whatever this angle is it's y it will be because it's a negative angle this one has to be negative of that y value which will convert it back to a positive value so this angle here is minus y let's see if we can just squeeze it in there but that's the bit that you've got to be careful about so if that was mi uh, minus 30 degrees this would be minus minus 30 degrees and it would tell us that that's 30 degrees then so I hope you got that idea there so when it comes to looking at when x is a negative value less than zero what we've got is that this exterior angle z is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles a well-known theorem when it comes to doing triangles so I could say that angle z must equal minus y plus this angle here the 90 degrees or pi upon 2 radians so it must equal minus y plus pi upon 2 radians and if I add y to both sides I get y plus z equals pi upon 2 and so therefore you can see that whether x is greater than or equal to 0 or less than 0 we end up with the same result that y plus z arc sine x plus arc cos x equals pi upon 2 so we can just summarize that to be therefore arc sine x plus arc cos x equals pi upon 2 okay so hope you've got that and uh, there we go that's that's my way of proving that result anyway